us for our Meet the Employer virtual trek with e j Gallo Winery. I'm Erin Shields, Director, Alumni and Employer Engagement at Gonzaga University. e j Gallo has been one of Gonzaga's premier engaged employers for going on 15 years. They've participated consistently in our Seattle Trek career fair, our on-campus career fairs, as well as on-campus interviewing. We're very pleased to announce that Gallo just recently hired three Zags into their sales leadership development program, which we'll hear more about today. Today we'll hear from two members of the e j Gallo team. We, they'll share information about their organization, culture, opportunities, and how you can stand out as a candidate. I'd like to introduce Marnie Pedick, Sales Recruiting Manager, Western Region, and Kyle Mama, Business Development Manager, On-Prem, Washington. During their presentation, we ask that, that participants remain muted. And following the presentation, we'll divide you into two breakout groups. Each will be led by one of our e j Gallo hosts. The purpose of this time is for you to ask questions directly and network. So during that 10 minute session, turn your video on and unmute yourself to engage in the dialogue. At 11.55, we'll bring everyone back together and address any uh, last minute questions. So those are questions that you can enter in the chat and we'll go over those as well as closing. So at this time, I will stop share here and turn it over to Marnie. Hey everybody, can y'all hear me just well? Great, so I am going to share my screen. We'll take you through um, the history of the wine industry, some exciting news at Gallo, how the business is looking right now. I'm sure some of you are curious how the, the alcohol biz is doing. Um, so we'll walk through some of that and we'll go through our opportunity at a j Gallo Winery. And then uh, Kyle, which I like to call him the mayor of Spokane, will be kind of taking you through his story and, uh, and what he's doing. So um, please, if you, if you do have questions mid, like you can, you, I'm, not a, I'm not shy, you may ask, uh, but we can also get out to them in the, in the breakout room as well. So we're gonna go through and do some introductions first. So again, uh, my name's Marnie, nice to meet you guys. I just celebrated my 10 year anniversary with Gallo as part of the sales leadership development program. I started right out of college, a University of Idaho. So, you know, sort of close, uh, Palouse Pride. Um, started out of uh, University of Idaho, and now I currently live in Las Vegas. And if you're currently looking for a job or looking for opportunities, my biggest piece of advice, especially during this time, is be open to new opportunities. When I saw Gallo at the career fair, I said, absolutely not. Like, I don't want to do sales. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, but look, here I am today, 10 years in, and uh, the rest of my career to go. So that's kind of my biggest piece of advice. Just don't, don't say no. Be open to, to opportunities you didn't think you'd know or like before. So and Kyle, I'll let you uh, introduce yourself here. You're on mute, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyle Muma. I attended Washington State University. I've been with the winery now for six years. Um, I'm living in Seattle, Washington now. And uh, I've just been, it's been a great honor to jump back on the recruiting team here with Marnie again and, and uh, helping out with the Zags. Thanks, Kyle. So we're going to go through a little bit of the company history, our culture, um, and then we'll do, like I said, a touch on the industry. We'll do a little bit of how to impress a recruiter, specifically Gallo, because, you know, we're here and this is what we look for. And then we'll talk about our opportunity. So... If, is it, have you heard of E&J? Has anybody heard of E&J Gallo Winery? Does anybody know what happened in 1933 and why we perhaps started in 1933? It was a repeal of prohibition. So right when that happened, Ernest and Julio Gallo got started. They started their winery by finding pamphlets, 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 excuse me, in the basement of a library and had a $5,000 loan from Julio's mother-in-law. And the rest is history. Today, we are the largest family owned and operated winery in the entire world. We are completely vertically integrated and we have a state-of-the-art distillery where we make brands like New Amsterdam and E&J Brandy. Uh, and now we also have four generations of family members who are involved in working with the winery. So like I said, Ernest and Julio Gallo started this company. You had Ernest, who is on the sales and marketing side and Julio's, 
does the uh, winemaking side. And it's pretty funny if you look down the line, that's kind of still how the, uh, the families are involved today. Uh, the first year, Ernest said, oh, Julio, I can sell more wine than you can make. And Julio was like, mm -mm, I can sell more wine or I can make more wine than you can sell. Uh, in their first year, they made 177 gallons and they sold every single drop. So uh, as today, and like I said, we're the largest winery in the world and we'll kind of touch on our scope of that here in a little bit. So if you talk to anyone at Gallo, if you have talked to us before and they, you know, they ask you, what is your favorite part about Gallo? 99% of the time you will hear the people and the culture. So we are still family owned and it, we are very family oriented. So when you say like, I'm a member of the Gallo family, it's true and that's how we really feel. Uh, we are friends with each other, we're in each other's weddings, we support each other and we're here for those small life moments and the big life moments when it matters most. Our company is very fast paced. Um, we're, the only change uh, at Gallo is change or it's constant. So we're always changing and motivating and innovation is one of our core values. So we're always looking to find that next big thing. We're very collaborative. Um, before, uh, unfortunately, the uh, coronavirus hit, we have this beautiful new Dry Creek building. It's LEED certified, it's beautiful. We have now that big open floor plan workspace with bean bags and you're chilling and you're just collaborating with each other. So it's very, very important to us. Like I touched on innovation, we are, innovation is one of our core six values. Um, things that aren't, especially in the wine industry, things that weren't around 10 years ago are huge today. Seltzer, canned wine, pre-made cocktails, that's all new. And we're on the forefront of many of those segments. Uh, we are very diverse and inclusive. I'll touch on our employee resource groups here in a minute. And then what our focus is, is really on professional and personal development of our employees. So what that means is we're not just gonna give you like a wine education. We will give it to you, but it's not just wine education. It's not just sales education. It's we're giving you tools to create you uh, as a stronger employee, not just for us, but as a person as well. So high impact presentations, negotiations 101. Yes, that helps in my daily job, but that also helps in my personal life, trying to convince my husband that we should do some one thing versus the other. So it really does personal and professional development, uh, and it's very, very important to us. And actions speak louder than words. So I kind of touched on our LEED certified building, but we also give back to the community and the uh, local environment. So we have this, um, I don't know if it's on this slide. It's not, but what we have is we call the 50-50 give back program. So if you think of Napa Valley, if you guys know anything about wine, Napa Valley is the premier destination for US Cabernet. Every acre of land in Napa Valley is ridiculously expensive. So the 50-50 Give Back program is a program that was designed in the 30s where every acre of land that Gallo buys, half of it will be planted to acres, to vineyards. The other half will be given back to natural habitats. So when you think of the expensive land and the cost that goes into it, Gallo will only ever have 50% of our land planted to vine. And fun fact, Gallo is the largest private landowner in the state of California, which is crazy when you think about all the agriculture that comes out of there. So I won't go through this slide and read it specifically, but you can see that we are very dedicated to leaving the planet a better place than how we found it. And a lot of that is recycling. Um, 25, I'll just, this is my favorite set, 29% of all recycled glass in California comes through our Gallo glass plant. So it is really, really important to us to recycle, reuse, and reduce. And then some recognition, some, like I said, people love working here. So the best place to work four years in a row at Glassdoor, last year we were number 14. Uh, we are the no, we are number one in the food and beverage industry and only 19 other companies have made the top 100 four years in a row. So we are in good company at Glassdoor. Our just recently retired CEO, Joe Gallo, also earned the top CEO of 2018 and 2019. Do you guys know what Glassdoor is? 100% employee rated or people who may have interviewed there. So we don't pay for these reviews. We don't pay for this. People just really do love working here. We are the, also, according to Forbes, the number 10 employer in California. Um, and it, Fairy Godboss, you guys know what Fairy Godboss is? 
So it's kind of like Glassdoor, but it's for women by women. So it is all about uh, recognizing women in the workplace. And so 17, 18, and 19, we were awarded best company by Fairy God Boss, which is really cool coming up and coming in a, in a typically male dominated industry. So this is a very important slide to me. Uh, how has Gallo stepped up? We talk about the community and we talk about giving back, but how have we stepped up lately? And so I'm not gonna go through and read this line by line, but you can see the incredible impact what we've done and tried to give back to our local communities. We would not be who we were or where we are if we didn't have our communities supporting us in the background. So we really feel that that's very important to give back. So if you guys, um, I don't know, I mentioned it earlier, but a little brand called New Amsterdam Vodka, it is the number two vodka in the country, I believe. And that is a lot of cases. That takes a lot of production, 24 hour production, seven days a week. Um, but what, when this happened, what we did is we made the decision to shut down our factory or shut down our vodka making facility for 24 hours a week, one, one day a week, 24 hours, and dedicate it specifically to hand sanitizer. So we've created hand sanitizer and donated it to local communities in California and Washington around our distilleries. We also have um, restaurants. I don't know wherever, if you guys are in Spokane or Seattle or wherever you live, all the restaurants shut down for a very long period of time. And for many people, that's mom and pops and that's their livelihood, the servers, the bartenders, the, co the cooks, the chefs, the owners. That's how they make their living. And so what Gallo said, and they highly encourage this to every single employee, they said, go spend $150 a month, or excuse me, a week, $150 a week per employee to go spend at local bars and restaurants. That's not for the employee to consume it well, it's then to donate it to people on the front line. So we have amazing videos and stories of people spending this, their $150, and then go donating it to hospitals and frontline workers. And the feel good moments, uh, it, it truly is real. So we really like and believe in giving back to our communities. And I was talking about our employee resource groups. So we have seven employee resource groups, we call them ERGs, at EJ Gallo Winery. So we have Asia, the Gallo African American Network, Women of Wine and Spirits, La Casa, LGBTQ+, GVO, which is our veterans organization, and Enable, so our uh, disability network. And these are national employee resource groups. Anyone can join, whether you are a member of the group or an ally of the group, and that is involved um, monthly. We've been around, we're, we've been around for 85 years or more, but we've been, we've had employee resource groups for over 20 years. So this isn't a new thing for us. We are established and we like to say that we lead our industry in creating a diverse and inclusive workplace. And we believe it's important because our consumers are diverse and are, are very diverse. So how can you speak to a consumer base that you're not representative of? We have ways to go in, in our diversity, but we believe that this is extremely important, especially now to be representative of our communities. And then a few brands. Um, like I said, we, uh, we're the largest winery in the world. Um, and there's a couple of brands on here you might recognize if you're 21 plus, of course. Um, so like I was talking about innovation as well. So um, wine in a can, high noon, vodka, soda in a can that's gonna seltzer ABV. You have boxed wine, go anywhere wine. We have specialty screw caps. Uh, that are resealable. We have Lamarca. So things that have not been on the market before that are now very, very important to the industry. Gallo was at the forefront of many of these. So it's very, very exciting for us and it's really important to continue that legacy. So, you know, like you say, like what is the biggest winery in the world? One in every four bottles of wine sold is a Gallo wine. That is an incredible statistic. And we're actually in the middle of an acquisition that will be the largest in the history of the US wine industry. And once that happens, we will be one in every three bottles of wine sold in the United States. So if you are a wine consumer, I'm sure and I hope you've consumed and uh, enjoyed one of our products before. And I was talking about vertically integrated. Do you guys know what vertically integrated means? So vertically integrated, I see a couple of nods here from people with their videos on. So what it means is we do it all. So from land ownership to grape growing, to glass making, to marketing and then sales, we are involved in every step of the way. 
So there are, if you, ha if you have a passion for marketing, that's an option. If you have a passion for grape growing, that's an option. And it's very, very cool to say if everything shut down, we could be still fully running regardless of, of opportunity or of, of need. Excuse me. All right. Now we're going to talk about the industry a little bit, specifically what's going on with our industry. So why the wine and spirits industry? Why are we here talking to you today? Um, this is consumer product goods. So CPG, you can see US retailers leading CPG categories of 2017. So the number one category is frozen. Makes sense, right? Who doesn't love a good frozen pizza, especially Barstool Pizza Review. I don't know if you guys have been watching those, but love it. Uh, but right behind that is liquor. And this is inclusive of beer, wine, spirits. Frozen and then liquor are the two consumer product goods and uh, categories in grocery accounts. And when you look at things like the recession, um, thankfully, we are very recession proof because when times are good, people are drinking. They might be drinking some high end stuff, some of that nice champagne. When times are bad, people's habits typically don't change. They might just trade down to a lower uh, category. So and you can kind of see general food, home, health, et cetera. Um, but we are a top leading category in the consumer product goods industry, and we are growing in both revenue and volume every year, or year over year. Oh, there you go. Um, why is that? Uh, the U.S. wine consumption is increasing. So 2.6 billion cases of wine are consumed a year. 12 bottles on average are in a case of wine. 2.6 billion and the United States is now number one. So why is, why, why is it growing? Because we consume 324 million cases of wine a year, which is crazy. However, we have the, one of the smallest per capitas. So what this means is that there is so much opportunity to introduce new people to the category. So, um, uh, if you think about Italy and Spain, if you study abroad or if you've been there, meals are an event. You sit down with your family and maybe you're, you're 14, 15, 16, you're drinking a glass of wine and that's just casual because that's how your uh, culture is. That's just, it's just part of the culture. That is obviously not part of the US culture. And so people tend to get into the category later. And so this is where we have a good opportunity to grow. Think about categories like, um, Moscato, another innovation that Gallo is making accessible to daily consumers. So sweets, people tend to go into the industry drinking sweets. So if you guys have heard of Barefoot Moscato, um, we now have, it just started with Barefoot Moscato. Now we have Pink Moscato, we have Red Moscato, we have Fruit Scato. So it's like fruit infused, so peach Moscato. So it is just a huge opportunity for consumers to enter the wine industry uh, and drink. So. All this is being said is why choose the wine and spirits industry? Because there is opportunity. Um, touch a little bit on what's going on in the world today. Unfortunately, you know, it, a lot of industries are suffering, but we are growing a spe spe specifically in our retail business. So in our grocery wine accounts, um, we've been really lucky. We've not had to lay people off. We've still been able to offer our internships and we have not uh, halted any hiring procedures. So, it's very exciting for us. We're in a really cool time. Well, not, we're not in a cool time. Let me take that back. Um, we're very lucky to be a little bit recession proof and to have opportunities available where many people do not. So we're very fortunate. I'll say it like that, but. All right, so now that is just a little bit on the industry and about Gallo and let's talk about a little bit of a career readiness. So how, if you're like, oh, that sounds great. Like, how do I, how do I impress you? How do I know more? So, a lot of it is your resume. Uh, unfortunately, as we see the world today, it is going to be very, very virtual. So how can you show up via a piece of paper? So what you want on there is your education, your work experiences, your internships, your leadership roles, all of these things in here. And however you wanna make it up, that's up to you, but make sure uh, what you're doing is presenting to the in company you want to sell yourself to. So if you're maybe presenting to a design firm, you might want to have a cool design on your resume to, you know, be that extra standout. If you're applying to this uh, sales leadership development program at Gallo, 
you might want your first heading to be leadership on your resume. So there's opportunities here to tailor your resume uh, and then have maybe multiple copies and just kind of edit it to who you're talking to as an employer. And then getting noticed. So don't be afraid to approach recruiters, LinkedIn, email. Um, you can ask Erin and then she could connect you with employers. So what you have in college is resources at your fingertips. It's very exciting. You have career centers, advisors, professors, career fairs. There's so many opportunities for you to get involved and get noticed. Don't be afraid to use them because you will never have this amount of resources on hand again. So when you, when, then when you do get approached by, or when you do approach a recruiter, ask questions and ask for the sale. So what makes a successful, successful candidate? What's it going to take to get hired? What are you looking for for your next candidate? Um, and again, like I said, the resume is important because that might be the first thing we notice. But then when you get the interview, make sure to be yourself. Don't just be a talking box. So just have your resume up here and just reading off your resume. Uh, be engaging, especially for Gallo. We're looking for salespeople and salespeople tend to need to be engaging uh, to make a sale. I don't know if you've ever tried to sell or buy from like a brick wall. It's not very engaging. Use referrals. So Aaron, you know, if, if, if Aaron is, is, a, is a, a referral for you, be like, Aaron, who do you know? And then say, hey, Marnie, I talked to Aaron. She thinks you'd be a great uh, person to connect with. So when you can create that personal connection, one person to the next, that makes a big difference. And that's like, oh, I trust Aaron. Like, I know she's going to give me a good candidate. Of course, that's going to be a immediate interview, uh, coffee conversation. Be positive, smile, engaging. Um, use specific examples when talking about your resume. So don't just say like, oh, I was the president of my club. Like I was the president of my club and I uh, recruited 20% more candidates to come and join. And then we raised $15,000 for X budget. So just be specific when you're talking and be able to quantify what your resume has. So don't just say like, I was a president. You can say I was elected by my peers and I managed a house of 120 individuals. By being able to quantify your resume, that answers a lot of questions right away and you can get to more specifics versus just spending your interview time saying like, okay, well, were you elected? How many people, et cetera. And then have your elevator pitch ready and practiced. Red pen it too. It might not be perfect the first time, make it editable and go back and keep changing it versus, uh, or depending on who you're talking to. And then selling yourself. So you are looking for a sales job. I don't have sales experience, but I don't know much about wine, but these are things that can be taught. Sales is very easy to teach, but what we can't teach is self-motivation. So good salespeople are very entrepreneurial. They are hungry. They have grit. They want to get out there and they want to get in what they put or they want to get out what they put in so if they put in 100 percent effort they want to get 100 percent out and that can't be taught we can teach you sales we can teach you wine so in your interview make sure you're selling those skills your people skills your motivation your work ethic and your persistence because everything else regardless of the industry can typically be taught and then what you did versus what you learned. So this is how I did it. Not like I learned how to manage people. It's like I manage people through X, Y, and Z. Um, and again, work experience isn't always key. You don't have to have a sales role. You don't have to have wine experience. Um, it's about those other unteachable soft skills. And then pursuing a recruiter. So schedule that one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, use your referrals and get that meeting first and foremost, and then ask those questions. What makes a successful candidate? What makes a successful hire? How can I get this role? And then make sure you're following up. This is very, very important because specifically in sales for Gallo, follow up, <laughs> following up is so important. So sending a thank you note via LinkedIn. Um, it's pretty hard to do a handwritten note right now, but uh, an email after an interview or a connection on LinkedIn with a personalized message goes a very long way to showing your interest. All right, so that's kind of like how to sell yourself to a recruiter. I went through that pretty quickly, uh, but please again, ask questions or um, as we break out and uh, I'm gonna have Kyle, I'm gonna give it to Kyle to talk about our opportunity. Awesome, Marnie, you wanna just keep the ball and I'll tell you when to switch, that'll be perfect. You better believe it.
Awesome. All right. So guys, we're just going to run through the sales leadership development program, uh, the phases that, that go into this program. And it starts with phase one as a retail sales representative. And the biggest part about that is learning sales leadership for yourself. You are learning the business, the CPG industry from the ground up, but also more importantly, you're learning the sales skills needed to uh, propel yourself forward in your career uh, professionally. Um, this is the cornerstone to our, to our program and you will learn a ton. Um, it is, it is highly competitive, but it is very, very fun and rewarding. And, and Marnie did mention you get what you put, uh, you get out of it, what you put in. And it is, it is, uh, I lean on skills that I learned being a sales rep every day, still in my, in my uh, job now. Uh, and then from there, we are a meritocracy. So when you are ready to be promoted, uh, you will be promoted into to phase two, which is a district manager. And then you're learning uh, sales leadership um, through others in a team. So now you are uh, forced into a, a position where you are leading amongst your peers um, and you are, you're taking on more responsibility. This is the uh, more negotiation side of the business. You're learning how to, um, to use your energy to influence your team and and uh, achieve goals that you are are, are set upon. Uh, from there, those those two phases are the most important phases of your entire career. What you uh, learn there will carry you through the rest of your career in any business, any company. But these two phases at ENJ Gallo um, through your sales leadership development program will carry you through the rest of your career. Uh, and I have no doubts about that. Phase three is when uh, Pandora's box kind of opens up uh, for opportunities within our winery. Um, but also, I, I kind of like to look at it instead of a corporate ladder, phase three is when the corporate jung jungle gym springs out. And there's a lot of different areas you can, you can go into phase three there. You can be in uh, distributor management, uh, customer development, on-premise opportunities open up. Um, there are many, many paths uh, that, that lead into phase three. And not everybody's journey is, is the same through the first one and two. Uh, is pretty uh, is pretty similar for every single every single employee. But phase three is where uh, people's journeys start to take different paths and different steps um, for your strengths and sometimes uh, for your for your areas of opportunity as well. Because uh, uh, Gallo is known to put people in in places where uh, they they would like to see them improve and then into a different spot where where they they know they'll thrive. Here we go. Um, the sales representative role is very entrepreneurial. Uh, you're working in an independently in an, in an independent territory, problem solving. Um, your communication skills will blossom in this because you are really leading yourself and finding that gatekeeper in your your established book of business, and you're growing our business. Um, you'll look into uh, business analysis uh, by by checking your territory and knowing where you need to grow and things you need to expand and and things that that are working for you, and then some of the problem spots. Uh, persuasion, negotiation, and learning how to sell a concept is very very big. Uh, when you're a sales rep. So instead of just selling a product, you're also selling the message and the concept behind your display or program that we are programming into these stores with the NJ Gala Winery. And then learning how to sell yourself. Um, this is just perfect practice for the rest of your professional career. Um, and, and that is just um, being able to to negotiate and, and show yourself and become uh, partners with these gatekeepers at multiple levels of, of authority at these accounts um, and sell yourself and the products that you bring with you. There we go. Uh, oppor opportunities for growth and upward mobility, uh, growing your career at Gallo. 95% uh, of our sales uh, associates are promoted from within. So that is something that's really, really great. And where, when you talk to anybody, I know Marnie mentioned this earlier, but when they talk about people and opportunity, this is one of the biggest things that, that Gallo has to offer is we hire from within, we train you, and we want to raise you up from within. Uh, Merit-based promotion, the hard work does pay off. Um, training programs in every single role. I know Marnie and I can, can both speak, for example, we have never stopped learning new things because as soon as you master something, we keep you on your toes and we throw something new at you to learn. So the, the, the learning curve never, never flattens out. You are always learning something new. Um, we continue to develop your skills both professionally and personally uh, in, in, in every single aspect of our job, whether it's wine knowledge or, or business, uh, uh, business skills. Um, so you'll, you'll continue to learn throughout your entire career. Um, and then uh, positions in sales management are the, are the common promotions in this. Sorry, she 
She clicks through too many times and then she can't click at all. So. And then uh, besides working at Gal, the only other dream job I would ever have would be the mayor of Spokane someday. Um, so be ready for that, guys. Uh, but but my experience firsthand was I was hired by, by E&J Gal after graduating from Washington State. I moved down uh, and I was inside of one of our distributor partners, which was called the Lions Beverage at the time in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, now Breakthrough Beverage of Arizona. And I lived down there for a few years and I was a sales rep and a district sales manager down there. And I learned so much about the wine industry in a big, big uh, urban city uh, with, with a bunch of sprawl and, and a bunch of different dynamics in, in Phoenix and then learned the Gallup portfolio in and out there. And then when I was provided the opportunity to move back to the Northwest where I was born and raised, I took that chance and I went up uh, to Oregon and I was a field marketing manager, which would now be considered like a market development manager in our new terms. Um, and, I, and I learned the winery side of the business by calling on our distributors throughout the state of Oregon in their retail business. So making sure that we were executing programs and uh, priorities throughout the year and uh, making revenue and volume goals. Uh, from there, I was uh, I switched over to the on-premise side of the business and worked uh, with bars, restaurants, hotels, and casinos in Oregon uh, for for about a year and a half before moving up to take uh, Marnie's old position in Washington and uh, the on-premise estate manager or business development manager in in Washington. So I've uh, I've been getting closer and closer to Spokane with every single move, and hopefully it continues. Uh, but we are at, we're having a great time up here in in Washington. Uh, other than this uh, beginning of the year and the the struggles with with the coronavirus, this is a really unique time, for, especially for the on-premise world. I know Marnie touched on it a bit, but. Uh, Gallo has been a leader at, at the uh, effort to help these restaurants and, and our accounts succeed through this really challenging time. And they know that we're here for them and we continue to do that. So that's my story. Kyle, what do you think that, like, what, what, do you, what would you say your biggest learning or your like, favorite, favorite part of the experience was? And how can that translate to like, what students are doing on campus and then getting involved? I think uh, my favorite part of this whole experience has been uh, being provided with with leaders and mentors that I can look up to in my in my business career. I have I think that being a, a student and freshly hired into any career, it's really important to be a sponge. And I think I've been able to take really good bits of every single boss or mentor that I've had through this in my entire career, and hopefully that's made me a better employee for. Uh, for Ian J. Gallo, and I know for sure it's made me a better human being in general because we do hire like world class people and uh, just people that you want to emulate. For sure, and you didn't go to Gonzaga, but you're from Spokane. I went, went to, to Gonzaga Prep, right? I went, to Gonzaga. I went to Gonzaga prepared. Prep, and then I went to Washington State. Um, but but my family ties. My brother's a GU grad. My mom's a GU has her uh, master's at GU f for for education, and then my dad got his law degree at, at GU. So I'm very tied to the community as well. Yeah. And Aaron said it earlier. We love hiring Gonzaga students. Uh, we had three hires last semester. Um, I don't know if y'all know Drew Collishaw. He was in finance. And then we had two soccer players come on board with us uh, this summer. And so. Um, Good people know good people. So we are excited to, to come back virtually uh, this semester, hopefully in person if, if anything happens. Um, yeah, and then if you guys wanna know more uh, or if you're interested um, at all and you want to just get in contact, do you guys know how to use QR codes? So you hold your phone up and it takes you there and it basically is just your phone or your email uh, your first name, how to get in contact with you. And then there's also Kyle and myself's emails. You can find our LinkedIn's as well and connect with us. Uh, we, Kyle, I, I'm the only dedicated recruiter. Like Kyle said, he's our business development manager for our on-premise business, but he's just responsible for Gonzaga recruiting. And so he is my right-hand man. And we cannot wait to find another three, four, five students this year to join our program. Um, so you can find both Kyle and myself uh, getting involved and around, um, but follow the Q QR code if y'all are interested in uh, learning more. You can also follow us on social. So we have our interns right now doing a takeover, talking about their experience and what they've learned so far. So if you follow Gallo Careers underscore Western Region on Instagram, you can hear from our current interns and employees and figure out like when we're going to be on campus or when we're doing virtual career fairs. So. 
we'll end with this and then we'll give it back to Aaron. We'll break on our breakout rooms. Um, so Ernest Gallo is our new CEO, brand new, just started uh, in May. He is uh, Ernest Gallo, not Ian J. Gallo. He is uh, son of Joe, so he's still on the sales marketing side, but it's very rare that we do these big interviews, but Shank and News Daily reached out to Ernest and said, you know, what lessons do you take from your forerunners in leading the family business? This could be very easy. He could say innovation. He could say, you know, leading the wine industry. So these are lessons, but what he said was hire great people and then invest in them. Listen to them and create a culture and environment for them to thrive. So this is not just us trying to say like, we're a great culture, it's about the people. This is truly coming from the CEO down, from the Gallo family members that they want to hire great people and then invest in them. So I love this quote, I think it's really impactful and I think it really hits home to our true family oriented message. So that was everything we had. I think we're right around 11.40. Erin, did we, did we get on time for you? Perfect. That wonderful information. And it's so evident that you two really, really love what you do and, and the organization. So thank you. And now you'll have to two different color fingernails. If anybody was wondering, <laughs> that's a trick of the eye. It, they're absolutely different. I couldn't decide. So I was like, I'm just going to do both. It's just virtual. And I forget how much I talk with my hands. So oh well. <laughs> no, this is the time I think to try out things like that, you know, Right? Maybe I'm going to start a trend. <laughs> Probably not. So do we have any other questions? Maybe you were in the room with Kyle and you have a question for Marnie. I encourage you to enter those in the chat. Kyle, I gave uh, my room the whole pitch on high noon, so I hope you hope you did the same. <laughs> well, I didn't, but I can now if if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. We have okay. How often are there opportunities in the marketing department at Gallo? Quite frequently, actually, we have a very robust marketing department. Um, the only thing I would say about the marketing department is it is uh, based on Modesto, California. So if you're looking to kind of move to the Central Valley, absolutely. But there's also opportunities within the sales leadership development program as a phase three uh, marketing analytics and beyond. And that could be kind of based anywhere. So um, we have a huge marketing department. We do it, most of it, 99 maybe not 99, 90% of it is in-house. Um, so there are tons of marketing opportunities. Great. This is from Molly Martin. How does the education surrounding wine, spirits, and other alcohols work at EJ Gallo? Thanks for the question, Molly. Um, we believe education is really important. So every year, so we have what we call Gallo University, and it's basically online modules, um, which set you up for success long term in your wine and spirits and just sales knowledge in general. So that's accessible 24-7 uh, for anybody who needs to go back, maybe do a refresher. We also have yearly wine and spirits courses. So once you hit a specific level in your career, you're invited to do a focus on class. So you'll do a wine 101 where you'll take you down to California and kind of do deep dive education. And then you'll do like a focus on Napa. And these are available one per year uh, per employee. So you could do just focus on Napa, how you make wine in Napa, why Napa is so important, what we have in Napa, and then what our competitors have in Napa. And so there's like Napa, Sonoma, Italy, focus on spirit, so you can do a spirit steep dive. Um, but we believe, you know, in order to best sell our products, you can know about our products. So we also have um, many, many virtual platforms, like we call it Gallo Gateway, where you have tasting notes and brand training sessions and presentations to kind of just further your own knowledge on your own time as well. We, we also have a partnership with the Society of Wine and Spirits Educators that we put our employees through. Um, so their CSS and their CSW, CWEs, uh, CSEs, and then also uh, a blossoming kind of new partnership with the, the Guild of the Court of Sommeliers. We put, we put what, 12 of our salespeople through 
um, certified SOM this year on the West Coast. So that's really impressive. We have 12 new certified sommeliers um, in our ranks now. Uh, and then, you know, continuing those educations along with our ambassador trips um, to, to other places in our, in our facilities to really take deep dives into um, our wine and spirits. I have another question from Molly Martin. What sales territories are you hiring for? So typically for um, outside of like our corporate based roles, like I was saying some marketing or finance out of Modesto, we hire for the West Coast. So Seattle, Portland, Northern California, so Bay Area Metro, and then Southern California, which is huge from like Monterey, literally to the border, San Diego, out to Palm Springs. So those are my typical roles that I hire for being a West Coast person, but we also have opportunities in Texas, Louisiana, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, all across the country. If you're like, no, I'm from New Jersey, you're the Midwest and that's where I wanna be. I you just reach out and we uh, connect you with that side of the country. So, uh, but it's typical um, major cities along the West Coast for Gonzaga students. And a question from Marin, or from Marin Counter, are there often public relationship public relations opportunities available with Gallo? You know, I'm gonna take a different approach and say, I think sales is public relations. So Marin, I don't know if you're, are you in PR, are you public relations? So I actually graduated with a degree in public relations and um, sales is all about connecting and creating personal relationships and building those relationships. Um, so if you are into PR, I think sales is a really cool opportunity um, to exercise everything that you've learned and use those skills literally on a daily basis, which I think is really cool. But in regards to like physical PR, we do have a PR department. Um, it's not as robust though, because we don't do a ton of like reach out or PR, but there are opportunities that are just not as frequent. But I highly encourage you to try sales because maybe you'll, maybe you'll love it. Thank you. I like your name, by the way. It's very close to Marnie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I am, I'm, okay, I just put um, in the chat a link to Zags Connect. If any of our participants today are, have not been on Zags Connect, uh, we recommend you do that. This is our uh, online uh, platform for mentoring and networking within the Gonzaga community, which absolutely includes friends, Marnie and Kyle. So take a look at that um, and build your profiles and you can continue to, to continue with conversations. I really appreciate your time today, Marnie and Kyle, and all this great information. And of course. We'll see you, I know, for our upcoming virtual career fairs. We hope to see you and um, going forward. And I just dropped my email again in the chat box if anybody is interested in, in reaching out and crafting for the relationship. If you guys just want to chat, mentor, opportunity, like I'm here. So I'm virtual now, so I can be everywhere. Thank you. That is so generous. I hope everyone takes you up on that. Of course. Thank you so much for having us, Erin, and, and the whole team at Gonzaga. We really appreciate our partnership. So hope to continue in many years in the future. Thank you all. Wonderful. We appreciate it too. Thank you all for joining us today. Keep an eye out for future Meet the Employer sessions coming your way. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much.